Okay, so a different day, a different t-shirt. I don't know if you're into t-shirts, but I am. This one says, choose science. Everything else is dumb. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just really believe in, I love how science is so unpolitical or I don't know. So anyway, um, we've been talking about seasons and um, we said that a big player or kind of to sum things up, the reason we have seasons is because of the Earth's axis of rotation is tilted. And it's tilted, we say, 23 and a half degrees relative to being kind of, if it were perpendicular to the plane of the ecliptic. Okay, so here you see Earth's tilted axis of rotation. And one of the things that you know, and this is what I want to talk about in this segment, so there's the north axis and there's the south axis. This would be Earth's tilted axis of rotation. It's tilted 23 and a half degrees, oops, relative to being perpendicular to kind of straight up and down to its orbit about the, the sun. So this is the winter solstice. Winter S for solstice. And actually, can you see where as the Earth spins on its axis once every 24 hours, we talked about these important lines of latitude. And there's what we call the Arctic Circle. So as the Earth um, rotates or spins on its axis, can you see where everybody up here, they get uh, their number of daylight hours is zilch. Okay? And actually, in the southern hemisphere, they are experiencing the, their summer solstice. And down here, everything that's south of the latitude, 66 and a half degrees south latitude, that's the Antarctic Circle, gets daylight 24 hours, all 24 hours. So one of the things you know that um, actually as we're right now, we're in the month of February and we're kind of coming out of um, our day, sh the number of daylight hours should be increasing. So clear over about June 21st or so, this is the configuration. Here's Earth's um, axis of rotation. Okay, This is six months later where if this is the Earth and my fist is the sun, the Earth has done this sort of thing. So now you see that actually then if you are north of the Arctic Circle, as the Earth spins, you get 24 hours of daylight. And the southern, and by the way, this would be in our hemisphere, this would be our summer solstice. Summer S. Okay. Um, so we have two equinoxes. Um, they would be the spring and the fall equinox, about March 21st or so, and um, September 21st, respectively. 21st, 23rd of September. And actually, the, the, if you think about an equinox, the thing that's equal in an equinox is the number of daylight hours and nighttime hours. So each one of these important lines of latitude here, from the Arctic Circle to the Antarctic Circle, in each of those locations, as the Earth rotates, you get 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime. This figure is just a little bit hard to... Um, these first two orientations of the Earth to the Sun, I can kind of draw the Sun in between them and they are correct. It just, this equinox is just a little bit off. But, um, but it was, by the way, it was kind of shown that, uh, but it was kind of shown this way so we could see daytime and nighttime. All right, so to kind of just kind of uh, summarize what you would expect at these various lines of latitude um, if your hemisphere is experiencing, for instance, the winter solstice. So just kind of mark in here a few important, um, let's just at least mark in here 66 and a half degrees um, latitude. So this, this zero latitude would be the equator. And of course, 90 degrees latitude would be the poles. And then 66 and a half degrees latitude would be the circles, Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle. So can you see here, if your hemisphere is experiencing the winter solstice, that actually, I'll draw a line here, anything that is towards the poles in that hemisphere, notice that this is showing you how many daylight hours you get, zilch, zero daylight hours. Okay. 
Um, the next column is um, if your hemisphere is experiencing the summer solstice. Um, now, I don't know, but the copy of Table 2-2 that I got to include in this presentation, actually, I don't know why, that they said that if you're on the pole side of the, the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic, Antarctic Circle during the summer solstice, we know that you are going to receive 24 hours of daylight. I'm not sure why the two months, four months, and six months. Okay, but the point here is that if you're if you're in the excuse me in the hemisphere where the axis is tilted towards the sun, like I've been showing over here, as the Earth rotates on its axis, if you're north in this case of the Arctic Circle, you're going to have 24 hours of daylight. So, and then the equinoxes, that's pretty straightforward. Um, so I want you to remember that we have two equinoxes. This would be summer in the northern hemisphere. So this would be fall in the northern hemisphere, winter in the northern hemisphere, um, and spring in the northern hemisphere. We call the spring and the fall equinoxes because we have equal number of daylight hours as nighttime hours. And then we call the, um, the summer and the winter um, solstices. So now I put this uh, little table together before I had a textbook that had the previous table. So this is some kind of very common information here. But here I'm just focusing, focusing on the northern hemisphere. And what you do is you have, kind of have to read this across. So um, here I went ahead and put in the northern hemisphere, generally speaking, when do the solstices and the equinoxes occur. And then I went ahead and said, where is that? Because we've been talking how important angle is, how important angle of the incoming radiation is um, relative to the horizon. And um, so the place that gets the, I guess I should say this, if this is my horizon, this is uh, the sun, the place that gets the 90 degree, the most direct rays at these particular, the two solstices and the two equinoxes are listed here. So for instance, in the northern hemisphere, when we're experiencing winter, it's the southern hemisphere, that special 23 and a half degrees south latitude we call the Tropic of Capricorn, that gets the most direct um, incoming rays. Um, then, uh, let's see, I think you even have a definition on here. So the subsolar point is when the sun's angle makes uh, 90 degrees with the horizon. Then in uh, the northern hemisphere, when we are at our summer solstice, about June 21st or so, we have um, the, the, the subsolar point or the most direct rays are going to be located at 23 and a half degrees north latitude. And then as it turns out, at both times of the equinox, whether it's spring equinox or fall equinox, the place that gets the most direct rays is the equator. Um, and then this actually, the previous slide did a good job of this. And um, here I'm just kind of uh, breaking out, let's see, oh yeah, I'm breaking out in the northern hemisphere again that 66 and a half instead of a third, I believe, at the Arctic Circle, if you are, um, uh, let's see, how do I have this? Yeah, if you're north of the Arctic Circle, and the summer, excuse me, the winter solstice, you're not going to get any daylight hours. If you're north of the Arctic Circle at either equinoxes, um, you're going to get equal 12 hours, 12 hours, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime. And if you're north of that sweet point, 66 and a half degrees north latitude, the Arctic Circle on the summer solstice, you're going to have 24 hours of daylight. And then I just went ahead and this table kind of completes um, what I thought was important, and it looks at the southern hemisphere, that sweet point, that Antarctic circle. So in this case, remember the seasons are reversed. So what is our winter solstice, okay, is their summer solstice. And if you are um, south, um, south of that Antarctic circle at the summer solstice in that hemisphere, you're going to get 24 hours of daylight, etc. So this table is kind of similar to the other table. And um, no, we do not orbit. Um, we are not in a system where we are planet orbiting multiple stars, as would kind of look like in this horizon. This is like a, 
a time-lapsed photo basically kind of showing you the sun as it appears to move across the sky um, at a high latitude. This must be north of the Arctic Circle um, on or about the summer solstice. And you can see that the sun dips, but it never falls below the horizon. Um, vampires do not like this. Just saying. So I'm going to kind of finish up with, we've been talking about seasons. You know, we generally kind of throw out that term, oh, it's winter, oh, it's summer, you know. And, and we kind of put our breaks, our astronomical seasons don't necessarily match up with, I'm going to put this up here, kind of what we generally think of as that particular season. So strictly speaking, we generally say spring begins on the spring equinox, which is about March 21st or so. You know, summer begins on the summer solstice, which is about June 21st or so, etc. But um, in general, we kind of speak more broadly. We would say, what, 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 which three months do we think of as spring? Eh, it depends on who you talk to, but March, April, May. Which three months are summer? June, July, August. That sort of thing. Which three months are autumn? Or fall, I love fall, September, October, November, winters, December, January, February. 